Carrie Lake has to take it to a higher court. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is another declaration of truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. Arizona governor candidate Carrie Lake has lost this first court round in her battle to show fraud at the polls. A, uh, a judge has said she has shown no misconduct, willful or otherwise, that even took place, much less affected the outcome. She will now appeal the ruling, as she earlier said she would. Two questions come to mind. Has she grounds for appeal? And can she find a court that cares? Before we get into detail, I do want to shout out to the prime sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views. Link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of great merchandise there, including this t-shirt that I have chosen for today, which quotes the philosopher Plato, saying, No one is more hated than he who speaks the truth. And how? One more thing. If you like what you're about to hear, you can like this video. You can even uh, click the bell icon to get a uh, notice every time I come up with a new one. In fact, do you see the little icon, the heart shape with a U.S. dollar sign in it? That's the super thanks icon. If you really want to keep these videos coming, click on that and leave me a tip. Any currency will do, so long as it's legal tender. Now, Judge Peter Thompson of the uh, uh, Superior Court of the State of Arizona in and for the County of Maricopa handed down his judgment yesterday in the case of Lake versus Hobbs. The best reportage comes from The Hill and The Daily Caller. The latter embedded a tweet containing two images from the written judgment. I have a link to it in the description. The two images address the two counts the judge had not, had not already dismissed. Illegal ballot-on-demand printer and tabulator configurations that caused malfunctions and delays and absence of a clear chain of custody of ballots. With regard to each count, the court said the same thing. The court officially found no clear or convincing evidence of any kind of misconduct, specific misconduct by officers of election or their supervisors, an intent to affect the election outcome or an actual effect on the election outcome. Carrie Lake and her team might face sanctions. Maricopa County officials threatened to move for sanctions, so the court ordered the county to file a statement of cost by Monday morning at 8 o'clock a.m. Mountain Time. If they do not file by then, they have waived the costs. And the court also ordered the county to file their motion, motion for sanctions by that time, if they will. If they do, Carrie Lake must respond in writing by 5 p.m. Katie Hobbs will take office on January 2nd, 2023. Carrie Lake announced her intention to appeal. In a tweet, to which I have a link in the description, she simply says she's doing it to try to restore faith and honesty in our elections. Obviously, the court knows about her intent to appeal, hence its order that Maricopa County get their filings in by Monday morning. I talked about this case before, after days one and two of the trial. I have some other coverage to quote, but before I do, I want to shout out to a sponsor who can really help you through the economic storms to come. That sponsor is OurSilverLines.com. Do you feel like you're working harder for your money just to get by? You are not alone. The fluctuating economy, employment issues, and unexpected changes in life have left many families struggling over the past few years. Collecting gold and silver can help shield you against many of these challenges. But if you're like me many years ago, you don't know where or how to start. Our Silver Lines helps by connecting you with thousands of members who are learning the secrets to creating and protecting true wealth by collecting precious metals. Whether you just want to collect rare and unique coins or take advantage of the business opportunities this company provides, either way, they can help you learn to live an exceptional life. Visit OurSilverLines.com to learn how you can build a legacy for your future. Now then, 
The Daily Caller quoted the Washington Post for greater detail in the 10-page judgment. The Daily Caller made two key quotes. First, they quoted Judge, uh, Judge Thompson addressing the frustration that voters felt. He writes, quote, the court, This court's duty is not solely to incline an ear to public outcry. It is to subject plaintiff's claims and defendant's actions to the light of the courtroom and scrutiny of the law. Close quote. The judge also said that overturning election results, and again I quote, has never been done in the history of the United States. Close quote. With all due respect to the court, that last statement is, in fact, incorrect. Last spring, a judge overturned a council election in Compton City, California. According to the New York Times, I have a link to that article in the description. Now, what happened here? Seems to me that whomever Judge Thompson tasked with finding precedent for overturning elections missed that case. Did the judge even ask? Maybe the judge had made up his mind that he would not overturn this election no matter what. Yesterday, the Cary Lake campaign summed up better their chief grounds for appeal. I have links in the description to three tweets from them, all addressing the same issue, which is, those ballot-on-demand printers had suffered misconfiguration in three previous elections, but Maricopa County used them anyway, and they had exactly the same results. Of greater interest is what Arizona law requires. The judge asked Carrie Lake to prove that Maricopa County deliberately acted to skew the outcome. But does the law require that? Perhaps not. Perhaps all it requires is a showing that widespread errors could have affected the outcome. Now that is something for the next level court to determine, and that gets to whether she can find a court that cares. Even more, many people who voted for Carrie Lake and many outside of Arizona who wanted to see her become governor are wondering, what have Republicans done for Carrie Lake and others like her, like us, lately? In brutal fact, the Republican National Committee did nothing to help Carrie Lake with either her campaign or her election contests. But the Arizona Republican Party has already called for Ronald McDaniel, the RNC chair, to resign. In fact, they made that call more than two weeks ago. They cite her failure to have polling hours extended on election day after the chaos became too obvious to ignore. They further cite her refusal to do anything further after a judge refused to extend polling hours. The Cary Lake campaign has said little to nothing about Rona McDaniel. They're still not talking about her, but others are. They have said often that Rona McDaniel does not want any more office holders like Cary Lake. She and others on the RNC would rather have, have their well-oiled patronage machine, even if they become a permanent minority. The election contest now goes to appeal. Lake has said she would go to the Supreme Court. Presumably that's the Arizona Supreme Court. If a reversal does not happen, well, then it looks to me, outsider though I am, that Arizona will go blue forever. And they're going to do it, or have done it, merely by getting the right people in place so that they can disenfranchise as many opposing voters as they need to. Lots of people are going to show up on election day to make the lots of people are going to show up on election day to make the point about who's popular. No problem. Misconfigure the ballot on demand printers to print a ballot image on the wrong size stock. People have to wait in line, and if they don't say forget it, we're going home. Well, those that stay find the polls closed to their faces. In fact. Their lawyers said it was our fault, meaning those of us who live in Arizona and did intend to vote for Carrie Lake, that we waited until the last minute to vote. Welcome to the new normal. Vote early. All right, we'll do that. I'm not breaking security here. That's obvious now. They as much as told us to do this. 
and we can also do our own version of ballot harvesting. We can run vote centers just as easily as they can. No, we wouldn't report results, but we can make sure that people identify themselves, give them a private place to mark their ballots, let them seal them up in the envelopes, and then we will take the envelopes to the drop boxes, and we can keep impeccable records in case anybody asks for them. We'll show those bumbling officials, hey, that was their defense. We can show them how to preserve a real chain of custody. But we have to reconcile ourselves to this much. Either we catch them off their guard just once, or even that will fail. The enemy are nothing if not adaptable. So then, people will have to move. And I mean move out of Arizona. And they are moving. Not just out of Arizona. They're moving out of all blue states into the red states. Out of place out of places that have never elected Republicans statewide, it seems, to places that have never elected Democrats statewide. Of course, that means that the Democrats have effectively confiscated a lot of residential and to a lesser degree commercial and industrial real estate that people have to sell at a loss. I mean, that's, they're not exactly getting just compensation. You, as you can imagine, property values will take one tremendous hit. So that leaves any of the interstate secession movements you hear about. Greater Idaho, which I've talked about before on this channel, is an obvious example. That, of course, won't apply to Arizona. But just the other day, San Bernardino County in California voted to study the issue of secession from the rest of California. They would be part of the proposed breakaway state of New California. And guess what? They share a border with Arizona. As states with large blue cities turn blue by reason of their welfare-dependent city populations, and maybe by reason of shenanigans like those that Katie Hobbs seems to be getting away with, or so that's what Carrie Lake alleged and alleges, the urban-rural divide is going to get ever more bitter. Now, Arizona is a special case. The Arizona House of Representatives held elections too, and they stayed in Republican hands. And the red districts are a contiguous region. The Arizona Senate did not have elections, and they are also under Republican control. Result? If the red areas want to form their own state, they can do it as soon as Republicans gain control of Congress. What they will not be able to do so easily is to merge with New California, because New California needs the consent of the California State Congress to break away. And these blue legislatures do seem to love hanging on to their discontented rural regions. Why? Maybe out of sheer spite. And I shudder to think what might come if this divide does not resolve and soon. Link in the description of the article to the latest uh, tweet with the images of the court ruling to Carrie Lake's tweet announcing her intent to appeal to the article in the LA Times about the Compton City Council election being overturned, sorry, Your Honor, but you missed that one. To the Carrie Lake campaign's three tweets protesting the ruling, to my Declarations of Truth Twitter account, and to Conservative News and Views. I've also left links to the awesome CNAV store and to rsilverlines.com, as I also mentioned. You know already about how to like a video, turn on notifications, and leave a tip. On the end screen, I'm going to leave a subscribe link to my channel, links to the two videos I did about days one and two of the trial of Lake versus Hobbs, and maybe I'll also leave my video about interstate secession. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.